something with them and all of a sudden you find yourself alone. Uh, they back out on you at the last minute. You know, I found out that oneness is much better than loneliness. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you noticed how often Jesus talked about oneness? Have you noticed how often Jesus mentioned the fact that he'll always be with you and never leave you? Have you ever picked up your Bible and was discouraged about something and you picked it up and found Jesus say that I'll never leave you or forsaken you? Oneness. These three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they were always together. Mm -hmm. Oneness. Matthew 1, 23 says, a virgin will be with child. Mm -hmm. She shall name him Emmanuel, right. meaning God with us. Genesis 26, 24 he appeared to Isaiah and said, I am God. The God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Fear not, for I am with thee. Genesis 28, 15, he promised Jacob that he will always keep him and be with him wherever he goes. Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, look upon them and be not afraid of their faces, because I'll be with you. And I will deliver you. Those are promises that God had given to us. Goals are promises that, that he gave to our forefathers. But in Hebrew, the 13th chapter, in verse 5, he changed his approach. He stopped talking about a group. He changed his approach. He didn't say, I would be with the group anymore, priest, pastor, minister. Now he have changed 
his approach is to say, I'll be with an individual. In Hebrew, he tells us, I will never leave you, nor forsaken you. In verse 8, he says, I am Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In church, I don't know about you, but that's good news. To know that God would never leave me. To know that God made this thing personal. To know that God said, whatever those other guys do, I'll be there. He's changing from a crowd to an individual. Sometimes the crowd may go haywire, but God said, let them go. And when you can't find nobody else, I'll be standing right there with you because I'll be there. I won't change. I'll be with you and I'll never leave you. That gives me hope. That gives me assurance that even when I go through my hardest time, even when I go through my most difficult trials, mm -hmm. God will be with me. Amen. That's good news. Amen. If you don't believe me, ask Daniel. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you about what happened to him in the lion's den. Right. Right. Ask the Hebrew boys about the fiery furnace. Yes. Find Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and ask them how faithful God is. Yes. Find uh, Moses and Joshua and they'll tell you that he'll never leave you. While you are at it, stop by and talk to Esther and Ruth. Yes. And they'll tell you how faithful God is. Yes. They'll say before you call, yes. he'll answer. Yes. The church, let me be honest. There are times when you feel that God has forsaken you. Yes. Yes. You don't have to say amen. Because I'm making this thing real. Yes. There are times when you have been in situations where well, you know that God has forsaken you. You feel all by yourself. You read Malachi 3, 7. Return unto me and I'll return unto you. And you're doing all the requirements. You're being faithful to God, both in your living and your giving. But there are some times you feel that God has forsaken you. Your car break down and it's two weeks before you get paid. Or your car may be running, but uh, you don't have any money to put no gas in it. Yes, all right. You're doing all you can to make it. You just got your job, and, and, and you know you got to get there. You can't call on no friends. They won't take you. Ain't no bus system going your way, and you lose your job. And you say, God, what's up? Mm. Have you ever felt that God has forsaken you? Mm. How do you get through life? When God, who you depend on, yes. has forsaken you, where do you run? Or who do you turn to when God has turned his back on you? Right. I mean, yes. this thing is real. Yes. This thing makes you feel like you want to throw your hands up. Yes. Not throw your hands up and shout, mm. but throw your hands up and run away. Do anybody out there know what I'm talking about? I mean, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about the God that you pray to. I'm talking about the God that you fall on your knees first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. I'm talking about that God. What do you do when that God turns his back on you? Where do you go? Who do you turn to? The record says there are three that bears records in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Oneness. Mean these three are always together. Oneness. Meaning these three are always agree. Jesus said, I do nothing but the will of my Father. Someone asked him, well then show us the Father. Jesus said, you see me, you see my father. Because me and my father are one. You see me, you see the father. These three are one. They are always together. 
and they always agree. At Jesus' baptism, at Jesus' birth, the Shekinah glory came and hovered over the manger while the Holy Ghost filled the air with joy. Yes, yes. Saying glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to all men. Oneness. At Jesus' baptism, the Spirit of God descended uh, like a dove. And the heavens open up and says, this is my beloved son, and him I'm well pleased. Oneness. <coughs> At Gethsemane, and they were together. Jesus had become discouraged, and they showed up to encourage him, to tell him. To, he sent Moses and Elijah to encourage him, to let him know, go on, we're standing behind you. Oneness. But now, it is Jesus Amen. who take the beating. Right. Right. Now it is Jesus who have the nails driven in his hand. Yeah. Now it's Jesus who's being betrayed. Mm. And one of my sons and his boys agreed to make a famous finger gesture while their school class picture was being taken. <laughs> but at the last minute, his boys backed out. <laughs> and the only one that was punished was him. Because he was the only one that made the gesture. Where was his boys? Why did... Why didn't they have his back? Mm -hmm. What happened to this all for one and one for all? all right. Oneness. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. But only Jesus will be punished. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus will hang on the cross. There was no Father. And there was no Holy Ghost. Oneness. Where was the Father? Where was the Holy Ghost? Where was the Father when the nail was being driven in Jesus' hand? Where was the Father when he was being pierced in his side? Where was the Father? Where was the Holy Ghost when they beat him? Where was the Holy Ghost when they spat on him? Where was his backup? Tell me. How do you get through life, problems, or face Satan when the God you love and the God who should have your back forsaken you? Mm -hmm. That's what the record says. Mm -hmm. This was Jesus' dilemma, facing his enemy while his God had forsaken him. Church, can you imagine how Jesus must have felt. Amen. His disciples ran out on him. All right, all right. Now he couldn't even see his father's face. Mm. His father has turned his back on him in his darkest hour. His father turned his back on his only begotten son. Mm. Can you imagine how a son must feel yes. when your father turn his back on you. Can you imagine how a son must feel when he have nobody to turn to and then he run home to daddy and daddy get on his case? Can you imagine how it must feel? Let me ask you this. Have you ever cried out to the Lord and asked him, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Who would imagine that a father like God would turn his back on his son. Jesus was in a place and he told a story about a, a man that had two sons. Mm -hmm. And he said that the father, uh, one son left home, but every day the father stood looking for the son, waiting for the son to come home. And when the son was far off, the father didn't wait till he entered into the, the courtyard. He ran to meet him. But yet, now we see that Jesus, look up. And he can't see his father's face. Jesus is being crucified. Yes, yes, yes. 
and his father has forsaken him. Yeah. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Where do you go? Where is God? I'm glad you asked. Second Corinthians 5.19. The record says, in 2 Corinthians 5.19, the record says that God was in Christ, yes. reconciling us back to himself. Yeah, all right, all right. Don't miss that. Uh, while Jesus was suffering and going to his pain, the father was right there. Yeah. Uh, while Jesus was having the nail driven in his hand, the father was right there. Yes, while they were spitting on Jesus and dragging him from one corner room to another, the father was right there. Yes, the record says God was in Christ reconciling himself back to us. Yes. Two years ago, I sat on the front row well, well. and I asked God why? Mm -hmm. And God told me something. I said, Lord, where are you? In time like these. Lord, where are you when I'm going through pain and suffering? Lord, you, you called me and said you'll never leave me. Where are you now? And God said, Michael, I'm the same place I was when I was with Jesus, when Jesus was being crucified. Yes. Right. And you know what? <laughs> I had the audacity to ask him, well, where is that? Yes. You know what he said? He said, I was in Christ, reconciling the world back to, my, back to himself. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself all alone, when you find like you're at your left end, when you find out that nobody seemed to believe in you, when things seem to be going bad, just know that God was in Christ, yes, All right. reconciling yes, us back to himself. Yes, the oneness was always there. Mm -hmm. That's why I love Christmas and Easter and communion, because it reminds me of God's oneness and his great love for me. So church, if you see me celebrate, don't talk about me. Just remember that I remember God's oneness and how Satan thought he almost had me. But God reached me by the nap of my hair and turned me around and set my life on the right road because God, kept me Holy Ghost, was in Christ, reconciling us back to himself. When I was on my knees, Elder, trying to make a cell, y'all know about that. God was in Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. Reconciling me back to him. When I was in the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong thing on my mind, God was in Christ. Reconciling me back to himself. In my deepest hour of sin, God was in Christ. Reconciling me back to this world. Back to himself. When I was without hope, God was in Christ. No matter what's going on in your life, God was in Christ. Yes. When it seemed like you got to battle this thing alone, God was in Christ. Yes. When it seemed like you, you, your kids had lost their mind after all the training you gave it, God was in Christ reconciling yes. us back to himself. And that's the word for someone here today who came looking for encouragement. All right, yeah. all right. I want to tell you, you can leave knowing one thing, that your God would never leave you, not forsake you. Amen. You can leave here knowing that God was in Christ. That's why Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, God was in Christ preparing to save you. Church, may I tell you about salvation? Can I tell you what salvation is? It's not an awesome thing. Salvation is simply living in the awareness of God's presence. Yes, all right. When you live in the awareness of God's presence, there's certain things you won't do. Oh, right. Certain places you won't go. Right. Certain things you won't say. Right. Certain things you won't eat. Mm -hmm. Because you're living in the presence, in the awareness of God. Yes. God's eyes is on the sparrow. Yes. But he's also watching you. Amen. When church folks look at Side your head like you got the pledge. Just know that God was in Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
when people stop speaking to you because they are jealous of you, when the haters get on your last nerve, just know that God was in Christ. All right. Reconciling you back. Amen. When suddenly the saints forget that they not always moved into amazing grace. All right. All right. Just know that God was in Christ. Yeah. Reconciling you back to himself. Amen. No matter how bad your situation is, I'm here to tell you about a God that was in Christ yes. Yes. and reconciling us back All to right. himself. Right. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. Father, even though we can't see you, we can see your amazing grace. Even though we can't see the wind, we know the evidence of it. And Lord, we can feel your presence in our life. Thank you for your oneness. Thank you for being who you are. I pause in this prayer, Lord, because even though it's communion, there may be someone here that say, like Peter, not just my feet. There's a man, woman, boy, or girl that appreciate the oneness of the Holy Ghost, the oneness of God, the oneness of Jesus. Appreciate how much they did for you, how much they did for me. And want to take a step further and say, Lord, here I am. Some of us need to say, Lord, take me back to the place where I first believed. Is there someone here for Jesus today? Someone want to make their stand? Someone want to show the world that yes, I messed up, but somewhere along the line I read that God was in Christ reconciling me back to himself. Is there someone for Jesus? Father, thank you for being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time, this time we're going to turn you in, in the hands of